Roberta. And I'm Duca. And together we are on the mission of bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life. So don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Monday for a new episode. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> While Linda rests, Roberta adds a little bit. Fly is also rest. Oh, I'm gonna go out and show you what's going on outside. Today Colin and Tom are doing some measurements for the next project. So they're gonna have a roof on the fly bridge and they're gonna do from scratch. And I think that's gonna be a really cool opportunity for me to see how fiberglass is done from scratch. Because maybe in the future we might want to build a hard dodger. Just gonna get a little bit of their knowledge. This is actually is much bigger than I thought. <laughs> see now, it's like huge. So Tom and I are just bolting down the frame, finally. <laughs> Looks like we got clear sky so we can just put some UV 4000 and just making sure we're not gonna have any leaks down these holes and secure this once and for all. Meanwhile, you guys are gonna run the cables from the, from the solar panels down to the, the charge controller. Four cables, six gauge and one. This one is for lights. Yep. Until there. When you think this is the hard one, there is another one. All we have to do, amigos, <laughs> they go to there. We have to get it across to here. I guess we did it. Do you want to see, Lindo? Do you want to see? No, you cannot see. No, you cannot go downstairs. I thought we need to bring to here, I was wrong. <laughs> In fact, we need to bring under the floor, all the way to after the batteries, and that's gonna be really, really tricky. This was the easiest part, <laughs> and I thought it was the hard one. <laughs> we can do it, we can do it. So, the cables are run down to the cabin. We are ready to do the solar panel installation. Let's get into it. They are gonna be paying close attention. We'll take them and you guys through the process of making a honeycomb hardtop. On the underside, we're gonna use this three quarter inch honeycomb and we have decided to put a window in both of them. So a little bit more work, but I think in the long term, it will work out to be advantageous. This rectangle here that I've marked out is the cutout for the window. So I'm leaving a five mil gap around the actual piece of perspex, and then um, we're gonna lay the three quarter inch honeycomb down. This one's gonna be cut. We're gonna put the glue that one down and then try to get a couple of bit of glass around the window. So that's the cutout for the perspex. Okay, there we go. The last thing uh, that we did was just scuff the gel coat. It's pretty much down to the fiberglass here just so that we can um, glass on top of that. We didn't want to just glass on top of shiny gel coat. Got to uh, take it back. So now that's all of our pieces ready for our little walkways. Tom doesn't get itchy from fiberglass. Too tough. What the hell? Now it's for real. Let's go up and let's have a fiberglass 101 nice. class. <laughs> and we can ask questions and we can, he can answer everything. I hope. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna hide any secret, are you? It's all good, right? I'll try my best. Yeah, it's all good. Let's go up. Before we start this fiberglass work, we need to explain where we are because maybe you understood already, maybe you didn't. If you never watched Colin, Colin has a YouTube channel called Parley Revival and he bought this Hurricane Damage Boat that he fixed for how long, Colin? Uh, <laughs> the first, no, the first time. The, the, fir the first time. The first time was like five months. Then he sailed a wrecked boat that was like could sail but it was not beautiful yet yeah. so how many countries 20 countries so 20 countries with a boat that was just like fixed really quick and then he fixed more for a, a little while yeah, another five months and then he was ready to cross the pacific and what happened then we found uh, broken bulkheads in our lagoon 450 and we we're literally about to sail across the pacific go home to new zealand 
and uh, the shrouds just went completely loose. Things started to go horribly wrong. There's only a few things it can be that can cause it. I don't know. It's kind of scary stuff. And we started cutting the boat open to find what happened and we found the, the bulkheads had both cracked on both sides, the main one that's under the mast. In this cabin, we've got a serious problem here with a crack in the bulkhead on both sides of this bulkhead. And then this has come up, so it means this whole hull has come up and it's caused these cracks on this side and on the port side of the boat. Okay. It has actually cracked here on the main bulkhead as well. It's also cracked here on both sides and also up here. So as we can see here, the whole hull of the boat has come down and it's caused these big cracks in this bulkhead here, which is very, very um, flimsy. So we turned around, came back to Panama, came back through the canal that we had just gone through so that we could come to Linton Bay and repair the bulkheads. And it's been a year now that we've been trying to get back in the water. You, you can see on his YouTube channel, I don't need to tell the whole story, but not only his boat was like that, but they found out that many, many similar boats have exactly the same problem. So now I, I, I imagine a lot of people around the world just like fixing the same mistakes and yeah. somehow. Yeah. There's so a thousand Lagoon 450s out there. A thousand? Oh. And um, as people are starting to check, more and more people are finding <laughs> that the bulkheads are, are bent or cracked. So. And, and how many do, do you know of it, do you think? Uh, right now there's about 65. But uh, a lot of people don't have Facebook, don't go on YouTube, don't you know live a normal sailor's lifestyle, which is quite isolated. And they haven't, uh, haven't checked their bulkheads yet. So as more people check, um, more people find that there's this issue unfortunately because it's a great brand it's a great boat i love it i'm so happy with my lagoon 450 but uh this bulkhead issue is just quite unfortunate tom's waiting oh tom is oh sorry tom no, look, no. you guys can start working yeah i'm just gonna stop bothering well let me explain sorry. what we're doing so we need some walkways down between the panels so that we can uh unzip the, the sail bag and do some work up on the mast if we need to and then we can only fit one panel on the front, so we need to make some fiberglass pieces for these big open areas. And then also people can sit up there and have a beer and watch the sunset, so it's gonna be really nice. Um, but I thought I could take you through from start to finish how we make a, a honeycomb structure, which can, a, can be applied to your guys' dodger, or you can make a table like this, you can make chairs, you can fiberglassing. It's a very... Uh, difficult concept to get your head around to start with but then once you learn the processes uh, there's a few rules you have to follow and then it's actually quite basic and you can make anything you want out of fiberglass if you uh, if you want to that's pretty cool yeah the, we, we really want to have a hard dodger in the future we have the canvas one now just so we can understand the size of dodger we want so basically we, we decide to use that for one year and then we can design exactly what we want and we can learn here and then we can just apply there let's get to work first step Sorry about the noise guys, there's some people water blasting down there using their uh, their dad's pressure washer to wash their boat. Sound familiar? Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Okay, right. so we're going to, there's a solar panel that comes to here and we want to fill this in with fiberglass. So we can't just put the honeycomb up here and start glassing because it will, um, it'll, it'll sag in the middle here and you'll end up with a bent hard top so you need some sort of a form of some sort of a frame underneath it so that's what we're going to use this plywood for so the first thing we're going to do is screw into this piece of plywood so that what we put on top of here will keep the shape so how much in solar panels are you going to have how many um there's going to be four solar panels up here and they're 400 watts each so that's an extra 1600 watts we already have 1600 watts so that's going to be 3.2 kilowatts of solar power <laughs> That's going to be going into our lithium battery so that huh. we can run our water maker and we might even go induction cooker and all of these fancy things so um we just want to be completely uh self-sufficient i wish we had all this space in yeah, our I, boat i told <laughs> colin that he should just have like a short power on his boat so he can sell energy you need energy just stop by and he can sell energy we could buy some energy <laughs> <laughs> so another thing we have to be very wary of in Panama in the wet season is rain. And when we, whenever we see dark clouds on the horizon, like today, like right now, 
We have to be very careful about whether we start the glassing or not. Brian told us that here there are four, uh, three months with no rain. And even in those three months, there's rain. Ah, okay. <laughs> so there's always rain here. And then in the rainy season, there's lightning. So we've been struck oh. by lightning. We lost all our electronics except for our solar panels and batteries. So chart plotters, inverters, everything fried. It's a sad day. So we're just doing this, just this plywood's got a little bit of a bend downwards. So that's the thing about this, we want to, to glass the honeycomb in exactly the right shape. If this plywood is bent down at the, at the front there, and then we put the honeycomb on and glass it, then forever our hard top <laughs> will have a silly little bend at the front. So we've got to make sure this is really nice and straight. All the things are on the top to avoid the dogs to eat anything. <laughs> oh my god. This dog. Good enough? Seems like you're good enough. This is what we're glassing on. Because our uh, hard top is slightly uh, curved, it's like an arc, um, this has got a curve in it here. So we want to glass this to exactly the same shape as the frame. So the first thing that's going to go on here is the half inch honeycomb. Um, it's very, very light. It's water resistant. Um, and this particular sheet has fiberglass and gel coat already on one side. So the idea of that is um, we're going to use it on the bottom side here so that it just saves us a little bit of time having to get that nice and flat and fed and everything. So that's going to go on the bottom side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to glue this piece to our three quarter inch piece there and that's going to be our sandwich structure and we're going to make it super strong by putting a piece of fiberglass between the two layers a piece of biaxial glass it's 1708 and then we're going to put two layers of glass on top of that so what we're going to end up with is two layers of glass three inch honeycomb one layer of glass the half inch honeycomb and then this already has glass and gel coat on the bottom so we're going to do it in two stages we're going to we're going to glue the two pieces of honeycomb and then we're going to let that kick so that'll take about 20 minutes and then that'll be set yeah um after that then we'll take our uh, we're going to run some battens across here just to get that to uh, the two pieces to stick together nicely yeah. and then once that's kicked once that's cured uh then we'll just put the two layers of uh, fiberglass on the top and then when we take it off it's going to be rock solid yeah. and it's going to be in the exact shape of this so you do all layers in one like you wait wait 20 minutes do another layer 20 minutes another layer just keep um and then you we'll do the top you are gonna see it babe yeah i'm just curious <laughs> no the thing is if i have questions i'm 100 percent sure a lot of you guys have questions so if i ask the questions i might answer your questions so it's good for everyone That's i want to learn it's actually um there's so many different ways you could do this yeah. so you can put epoxy over polyesters but you can't put polyesters over epoxy and gel coat is polyester. Oh, okay. It's behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> Quick weather check. No rain. <laughs> Not rain for the next five minutes. Five minutes. We've got five minutes. All right. I shake this polyester up really well. Make sure it uh, is all mixed. So watch this. Ah. <laughs> we'll delete that. Edit. 29.7 degrees. Yes. Lots of humidity. Oh, Thousand right percent. Okay, that's the hardener or the catalyst. That's what makes the resin cure and become hard. Mix it really, really, really well. Um, and then and then the clock is ticking. We've got like 20 minutes before this turns into like a rock. Race is on. See this is on. I'm curious to see when they start because it's gonna be like really quick job otherwise they're, they're in trouble. I'm just here for the fun, <laughs> it's not my boat, just vacations, you know? Okay. Here we go. I think I've got some on my top lip because it's gone <laughs> really, it's like camera. burning. You look yeah. good, it fits you really well. <laughs> Yeah, it's the new Botox. Yeah. <laughs> this is a filler. Okay, this is just thickened, thickened resin, just to make sure that the bottom piece is going to stick to the top piece of honeycomb.
Okay, so now that uh, we've put the battens down on top and screwed them down, those two bits of honeycomb with that glass in between are really, really nicely stuck together. So within 20, 30 minutes, this will be uh, kicked and rock hard. We'll take the battens off and then we'll glass the top. So we really want to keep this shape. So once we glass the top, we're gonna to put plastic on top and then put the uh, bits of wood on top again so that it cures in this exact shape. While we're waiting, we can uh, get these ones organized. So these are the walkways with the window inside. So we've already measured it up and everything. So we're gonna take this panel off and put the plywood in there and do exactly the same thing as we just did, but for the walkways. I'm curious to see the ones with the windows that... Yeah, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> Never done a window before. <laughs> We're done working for today, so it's time to get the, to the water. It's a nice swimming pool. I'm gonna come here every day. I just like this place. So what's going on now? What's the next step? Take these um, battens off it and see, uh, see what we're dealing with. It rained a lot last night. Well, we did put two pieces of plastic over this, so we're just going to put it in the sun and just feel for uh, any damp spots. If we try glass on top of that, the resin won't cure. Today the sun is really good, so we are going to start applying glass to the panels. And hopefully, before we leave to the boat show, I'm gonna see the final result, because I'm really curious. So, now we're gonna glass the top layer. There's already one layer built into the uh, honeycomb that we bought. So we're gonna put another layer on top of that, and then one layer below. So that'll be three layers of glass with about just over an inch of honeycomb. So it's gonna be super strong. Like we've already mentioned, the distance, the span between the frames is only about 300, 300 mil, or 30 centimeters. <laughs> So first thing, resin down, and then we put the first layer of glass, then we put another layer of glass, and then we're doing the plastic, squeegee out all the air bubbles, and then we screw it down. Just straightforward glass, uh, one layer of glass on top. I'm just going to put a time lapse on by now. You've seen enough glass work, so we'll skip through this pretty quick. We'll see you when it's cured. So they're both fully cured. <laughs> I think it's an odd haircut and an odd hairdresser. <laughs> yeah. I got this from the truck, yes see? Luca is eating a sweet bread and now we are gonna see what they have today. It's really good. We got just a juice because we have bread, but it's really, really sweet 
pineapple juice. I like, <laughs> I like sweet things. Too sweet for me. I, I'm going for the coffee. <laughs> Pobeda is gonna work today doing some subtitles. I'm gonna go scuba dive. <laughs> Have fun, babe. Yeah, the reason why we're gonna go right now scuba dive is because we need to wait for the, this honeycomb to get dry because somehow we forgot to take out of the flybridge assay and rain a lot. So we have a little bit of humidity on the honeycomb. So why we wait? Why? It's just better to do something fun, right? Like editing a video calling is gonna do. <laughs> That's a good thing about we're fitting a boat here that you have good water right in front of you. Exactly. Where we were, it's just like impossible to do that. Today in the morning I already went snorkeling with Tom and now, as you can tell, the dogs are excited. We are going out. We are going to go to explore another beach that they said is pretty cool, nice place. Whoa. We want to go to the beach. <laughs> we are gonna have dinner and maybe listen to some live music, I think, I guess. I hope. Yeah, that's that's what I heard at least. <laughs> Before we finish this episode, we have something really cool to talk about. I don't know if you guys heard, but we've been for the past two months working on a really cool project with another seven channels that is just awesome. Basically, each one of the boats is gonna have a recycling machine. We are gonna have a machine that can shred plastic that we collect on the islands, on the beach, trash. And with this shredded plastic, we can put in another machine that's gonna melt this plastic and turn it into a worm that we can mold into products or even inject into real modes to become objects and things that we can use on real life. But in order for this project to happen, we need your support. We need to raise enough money to buy these eight machines and to transform these eight boats into recycling stations. So if you're curious about what we're talking about, we're gonna leave a link on the description below. And if you want to support this project, this is gonna be a awesome way to bring awareness of the problem of plastics on our oceans. And I think with this machine, we can stop in small communities and show them that all the trash that they collect around can become products. And even more, because when you collect the garbage that you get on the beach, you see what you have and you can start thinking about when you use them and you can maybe use less plastic. And it's just a, a snowball that, you know, like a small, tiny project that can help in a long term, in a much bigger way, in my opinion. And I think you should just I'm talking too much as yeah. usual, but we are I, I'm gonna just... leave the link for the project on the description below so you can check more about it and yeah. help us, please. Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> awesome. I, I think it's gonna be a really, really cool way to support our world, our oceans. See you guys next week. See you.